As a proud media partner of the inaugural WA ASEAN Summit, Import Export TV chats with organiser Melissa channel Bemis about this hybrid conference to be held in March next year. Held for the first time in Perth, the hybrid event is set to bring together ASEAN ambassadors and high commissioners, including Australian counterparts, to talk about trade and investment opportunities between Asia and Western Australia. Melissa shares her insights on Western Australia's record budget surplus and how the nation's best performing economy might benefit from this upcoming summit. Stick around for this interview with Melissa. Hi Melissa, how are you? Good morning, thanks Lawrence. Very well, thank you. <laughs> nice to see you, Melissa, again. Now, could you please explain to us what is so unique about this upcoming summit in March next year? Uh, what's unique about the summit is that something like this has never been held in Western Australia before. Um, so uh, back in March 2018, uh, Malcolm Turnbull put on the first ASEAN Australia special summit in Sydney, where he brought in all 10 heads of state of the ASEAN nations. And that was a very big and spectacular event organised by Prime Minister and Cabinet um, with the, the backing of the government. And this time we decided to do a not-for-profit event um, in Western Australia to give a boost to our imports and exports, both from Western Australia and to Western Australia. And uh, give the government a little bit of a hand while they're really busy looking after us and doing all those other COVID things that they do. Wonderful. And Melissa, what do you hope to achieve and what message is the summit all about? What are you trying to convey? We're, we're trying to um, really put Western Australia on the map, I think, Lawrence. Um, one of the things that Western Australia misses out on is that Eastern states focus that Australia usually has. Uh, there's a funny... Um, statistic that people pull out, uh, 11 people out of 10 think that Sydney is the capital city of Australia. And I love that because really overseas people do. So Perth is a little bit missed out when it comes to um, overseas people actually knowing that we're here and what we do. Now, Melissa, how do you hope to engage markets throughout Asia for this summit? So, Ruja, thanks for the question. We're uh, working very closely with local, state and federal government in Australia and also the embassies that uh, reside in Canberra. So not just the ASEAN uh, embassies, but also invited Asian uh, nations who we hope to encourage to come to Western Australia next March should the borders be open? So in, in organising um, to bring our, our ambassadors here from Canberra, so we're engaging with the trade commissioners at the embassies in Canberra and also the uh, consul generals and honorary consuls here in Perth at the consulates and consulate generals. Wonderful. And Melissa, I mean, we all are envious and in awe of the, the sort of massive budget results that WA has recently achieved and, you know, you guys have been relatively COVID-free compared to the, not just the rest of Australia but the rest of the world, really. Um, so what do you think about the opportunities? What are the real opportunities that's exciting between WA and the trade and investment side of all those ASEAN nations? Lawrence, the opportunities are, are somewhat endless, really. Um, the state government, the Western Australian state government, um, asked a Harvard lab to uh, do some research Research into Western Australia and this Harvard lab recently released a report on the diversification opportunities in Western Australia, which are absolutely massive. So WA is particularly good at pulling things out of the ground, whether it's onshore or offshore, but there are huge gaps in the market and that encourages our international investors to see what the opportunities are here in WA. But it also gives our Western Australian um, experts or potential exporters an opportunity to research the market through the summit and through the virtual marketplace and engage with people that they would never have engaged with before. So I think the opportunities for bilateral and unilateral um, multilateral, sorry, uh, relationship building, uh, that's quite important through the summit. And then, of course, strengthening those supply chains that we have throughout the region and looking at different ways of moving products and services around. 
That's great. Now, Melissa, what is your outlook um, on post-COVID economic recovery? For, for Western Australia, things look very good, and that is because we have all of those resources that can be relied on for probably another 50 to 100 years. Uh, but in the meantime, we really need to be building those relationships with our Asian neighbours to ensure that when the borders do come down, business can be done. And for the rest of the region, we know that a lot of places are suffering quite severely right now and our hearts go out to the people uh, who are really seriously COVID affected. But we also know that people are really willing and able to do business if they know how to. So for post-COVID recovery and economic recovery, we need to start now and we need to start uh, not only building those relationships but fostering and nurturing the ones that we already have. Great. Well, so I want to ask another question is, you know, we talk about COVID recovery and ASEAN is so critically important, especially for Australia with market diversification, you know, with whole the whole COVID supply chain disruptions that the whole world has experienced. Everyone's looking towards whole new markets for buyers and sellers and investment. And ACR, especially here on Australia's doorstep, is so critically important. Uh, you know, that I think, have you got a lot of interest for the summer because of that diversification desire? There is. There's a lot of interest building now that we're starting to... Um bring on our ambassadors uh, one by one and uh, know that some of those ambassadors are coming to Perth for their first official visits. So the interest is actually growing in Western Australia and now that each of those ambassadors are coming on, the interest is growing in their nations as well. And so bit by bit we um, take our message out to the world uh, and let people know what we're doing. And as we let people know what we're doing, they get really excited about it. And just lastly, Melissa, what can we expect from this hybrid event? How many speakers will be there? And what is um, what, what are some of the exciting things to be expected? Uh, Ruja, we've got um, two days of summit, uh, about 28 sessions with multiple speakers in each, uh, some of those panel sessions, some of those presentations. We have Marketplace um, opening physically and virtually on the Sunday afternoon with a gala opening on the Sunday evening for about 200 dignitaries in person. But when it comes to international reach, we do expect 75 to 80 percent of our participants to be watching from overseas and they'll have opportunities to enter and engage in most of those sessions, except for the CEO forum, which is invitation only and quarantined virtually and physically. But then we have the business forum, policy forum, youth forum, arts and culture forum and sports diplomacy as well. So we're looking at a range of different really interesting topics, giving people creative content that they might not have seen before and also looking at those softer diplomacy uh, types of issues where soft diplomacy actually works particularly in business and it's not just about taking your mates to the football. There's lots of other ways of doing that too. Absolutely. We're really proud to be part of it as Import Export TV, as your you know, international trade media partner there. We're really excited to, to be part of it. So you know, looking forward to being over there and being amongst people again. It'll be nice. So <laughs> that'll be great. So thanks so much. And uh, we're really looking forward to, to really taking, being part of taking WASN Summit, uh, not just from Australia to the world via the channel. Sure. It's so exciting that we're starting this partnership that I'm, I'm sure is going to go on for many years to come. Let's get this first summit over and done with and, and then keep doing this um, from now on. Thanks very much for the opportunity, Ruja. And Thank you, Lawrence. Thanks, Thanks. Appreciate it. So, Take care. We'll see you soon. See you.